Hello Grinders School, I'm Colossus and welcome to the third part in my How to Win Steadily at the Micro series. Um, if you have watched my previous two videos, in the first video I gave an overview of all the major aspects which you should know about uh, if you want to win at the Micros. In my second video I went over the most important uh, the most important aspect of all these eight aspects, which basically was, um, which you can see here, uh, soft cushions, which mean, by which I mean that you should always, always be looking for new tables with fish on your right. There is no excuse for playing, staying, playing on a table where everybody is playing 21-15. Uh, I've made a video about this, uh, tried to show you how I uh, went, uh, went about it. The video didn't turn out to be great because I didn't find tables and had to switch out a lot and um, I remember I didn't run really well. Um, but then like the day afterwards I was playing again and I was thinking, hey, this is actually a great example to show you guys what I mean by this and I took a quick screenshot of me sitting at four tables here and this is this is these are the times when I make a ton of a ton of money when I'm playing like four tables with these guys on my table let's take a look at table number one we have a green guy 4026 on our right, I'm playing 39, take a look at this, I'm playing so tight. We have an, uh, a guy with an iPad avatar, well an iPad icon, and he's playing 58-0. Only 12 hands, but that's enough to say that this guy is a donkey. Perfect table, table number one. Uh, let's take a look at the bottom left table. Great table, look at me sitting here playing 23-10 with four times, well, three and a half stacks uh, in my and probably all of these stacks well I've only been playing there for 30 hands and I already had like three stacks in there probably because I stacked the guy on my right as many times he played every single hand he played 30 hands and he played every single of them one of them he is on my right uh, believe me if he was on my left I wouldn't make <laughs> I wouldn't make nearly as much money all the other tables, uh, all the other guys at the table, I don't care about. Uh, what I will talk about today is, for instance, Mr. Puglia here limps in. I ice raise him with like five, seven suited because I want to play a ton of hands against him. I will play much looser against fish than I will against regular uh, people. I will come back to that. If one of these guys, as Molodoy here or Maraki three bets me. I'm done. They can have my three big blinds. This is the point I'm going to talk about today. Don't, don't get into wars with people who know about three betting and light three betting and all that kind of stuff. It means that they are regulars. It means that they have watched training videos. It means that they are better than the average, in my opinion, player at the micro stakes. It's you don't don't go into wars. You're not at the table. I'm I'm solely at this table for this guy. Of course, when I have aces, I will play. Obviously, I will play back at the regulars. But with any marginal holdings, I'll just let them have it. Let's take a quick look at the because I, I can't fit it on the screen. Here, the third uh, table. Uh, okay, this one was is not good anymore. Do you know why? Because the guy. The reason why I was sitting here just got stacked by the other guy. Guess where the other guy was sitting? He was sitting on the left side of the donkey. So he had the donkey on his right and he stacked him. Just, I mean, all the money is coming from the guy on your right or at least the guys on your right. And if the guy on the right, like in table number four, again, is like a... Sh an a guy who's playing recreative poker, I mean, you should be ecstatic. Here even I have two super, super, uh, I was going to say, super fish, um, well, people who just don't care about poker. Uh, they're just there, they're there to have some fun. 
great example of um, four great tables. Uh, if I if I see any student and I see a lot of hands and they're, they're saying, "Oh, look, this guy three bets me and he's playing 2018." I'm always surprised. Why are you? Why are you at this table? I, I can understand that now in the U.S. with the current legislation, you don't always have the option to play on poker stars, I believe, and have like a ton of tables. But still, I mean, I also play on smaller European websites. You can always find donkeys. Either yeah, I'd rather play like um, let's say an, uh, a limit lower and play against fish than play a limit higher, and because I'm still gonna make more money playing a limit lower against the fish and I'm gonna play a limit higher against the regulars just because the regulars you're never gonna make money from well you're gonna make money from them but it's like it's like trying to squeeze out water from uh, a rock uh, it's not gonna be really profitable so today I'm gonna talk about uh, two stuff uh, we're not uh, gonna get into three bad wars with regulars which is gonna give them my three big blinds also um, what goes hand in hand with that is bluffing we don't bluff the only bluff we do is the C bet never say never I will do it like once every thousand hands but um, basically when you're starting out to play poker uh, you shouldn't get involved uh, versus regulars in uh, three bet pots and you shouldn't be bluffing except for the C bet and the C bet is something that you will do a lot you will be C betting a lot because that's the only bluff you'll do but you'll be surprised how often people still fold um, to see bets so the other uh, points uh, high card low stacks threesomes uh, balance and fairy tales and monsters we're gonna talk about in um, a later video so why am I all, all telling this stuff because I want you guys you're, uh, you're a member of grinder school um, grinding is actually making consistently small tiny profits but do it consistently uh, it's something I've been doing for <laughs> quite a long time now um, it doesn't mean that you always will have winning sessions believe me uh, but if you like these lines like this one where like over hundreds and hundreds thousands of hands you make money then you're in the right place another thing I want to mention is it just seems like for, I know for a guy who starts out what well, this is like 300,000 hands 300,000 hands is not a lot once you understand my strategy you'll be able to play anywhere between 10 and 20 tables because all difficult decisions we set aside we don't we don't get involved in of this guy uh, this guy raises my flop C bet on uh, such a dry board he can't really wrap anything except for like six combos of uh, sets and one combo of top pair I mean just fold okay and go to the next hand um, well don't fold if you have the best hand obviously but uh, if you have a really strong hand but I mean forget about it you'll be playing 15 tables uh, six max you'll be grinding out like four between let's say f uh, eight between eight and nine big blinds per hundred hands this adds up when you play 10 uh, 15 tables uh, this can go quickly uh, you can build a bankroll at 10 and L in one month playing 10 tables and playing this style the, the, the one that I have on the slide right now the playing the 2016 nitty never three betting falling to three bets where is my fall to three bet 80 percent I mean pff, so what it basically means that I'm it doesn't mean that I'm a complete nit. I do play 2016 um, which might go against the uh, tide is not right it's perfect I'm still playing tight though 2016 is tight at six max uh, it basically means that I'm playing like 16-12 versus any regular but against fish I open wide example for this is um, let me take oh let's take this one uh, here on the bottom right I have pocket kings let's say I have 5-7 uh, suited here uh, probably if this guy was not in the, on the button I'll probably raise 5-7 suited there because I want to uh, I want to get into pots in position versus the guy which is currently in the big bind playing 54 0. 
Uh, let's, however, and uh, this is all the fun part of all. However, I make an exception when this guy is on the button. I also make an exception that this guy is only has like a 60, uh, 64 big blind stack. 5-7 suited doesn't play well when stacks are low. Ace King, for instance, will play perfectly when stacks are low. 5-7 suited, you need some maneuverability post flop, you need the implied odds, you need bigger stacks. So I would not raise 5-7 suited. And I hope by the end of this series that you will see that all of these eight points here all fit together in a certain tight aggressive style and cannot be one cannot be separated from the other but it works so easily you'll be just sitting there leaning back in your chair whatever uh, clicking buttons and make money um, basically that's what I've been doing for the last year so um, about swings because I don't talk about tilt I think uh, there's a lot of videos about tilt out there uh, mental game I am not very good at this I have to admit um, do I tilt yes uh, do I recognize tilt fast yes I quit when I when I'm feeling tilty I've learned to quit I used to move up don't do it that's the only thing I, I'm gonna say uh, look at this uh, for instance they are like break-even stretches enormously like but there will be stretches where in in like in in 17,000 hands where you will win like uh, 30 buy-ins you will have these stretches and you will have stretches which are completely uh, crap like fucking playing 50,000 hands and being break-even well 50,000 hands if you're 50 break-even after after 50,000 and it's kind of crappy um, but uh, keep in mind, there is still some variance. Uh, yesterday, for instance, I was playing. I lost four pions. Doesn't matter. I mean, it was like two times queens versus aces, all in pre, and two times set over set. It, it is gonna happen. You're gonna have losing sessions, even when you get a consistent, consistently um, win rate. Uh, what I want to say. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fire up some tables. Uh, where I will talk, talk about uh, three, uh, folding to three bets and uh, not bluffing except for c um, Don't take my word like for it that I will never, never uh, barrel. Um, uh, but when you start, when you guys are watching this video, I suppose that you don't have that much experience. Uh, you will be fine by just c betting and then uh, giving up on the board. Um, if you don't improve, uh, you'll be fine uh, just with that. So with that said, I think I will load up. I'm thinking of 10 and 25 NL tables. Um, you guys, you guys should tell me if you, if you want to see lower stakes in 5 NL, 10 NL, 25 NL. There's a 16 NL limit also. 50 NL is possible. Um, I think 100 denial is not going to be suited anymore, especially not with these 8 bullet points. There's going to be a lot more metagame, there's going to be a lot more, well, uh, there's going to be more advanced concepts and this is beyond the scope of definitely of, uh, of this video series. So, let's think about it, well, let's, let's make it 10 denial, we'll see. I'll be right back. And, uh, Okay, Grand School, I'm back here and I've decided to play a mixture of 10 and all, 16 and all, 25 and all. Um, and actually, uh, just talk about the subjects I was uh, mentioning um, before. So, on table number one, we have a donkey on our right. He's only, he doesn't got a lot of uh, big blinds. Uh, uh, there's a guy on table number two who probably know, uh, he knows me from higher stakes. Um, it's not something that I like because 
those type of players usually play back. Look at me, I'm just C winning. I have ace high, I don't care on table number uh, two. I get called, I, I got I got called here. I'm done with the hand. Um, um, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't see any. We still have ace high. We've have our, uh, we uh, we have our cut shot. I'm not gonna double barrel first as a guy. I don't know. Uh, he's playing micro, so I suppose he's not the brightest the brightest of the. Ah, oh, come on, my PC is lagging a little bit. Uh, the donkey here limps in. I'm gonna ice raise with king five suited as usual, and I'm just gonna make a c bet here on table number two. Uh, the only bluff I do, uh, we get called. We're done with the hands. Uh, the queen nine suited, by the way, uh, steal was kind of a mistake. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, king five again. We're gonna make one single c bet and be done with the hand if we do get called, or unless we turn a king, uh, then I will uh, double barrel. Uh, well, then I will actually bet for value. So I believe we do have some good tables going on here. Um, this guy definitely is a bad player. I believe that Muxas isn't. A very good guy I'm going because he's playing six hands and he never raised um, one of his hands so uh, I'm just gonna fold here on table number two no reason to uh, make difficult decisions with queen high uh, when you're playing 15 20 tables um, a nice thing here on table on the bottom uh, table I'm gonna call here with jack queen on table number two it's a very good hand uh, to play in position with uh, and it's a very good hand uh, with stacks uh, being deep. And yeah. uh, I think I'll 3 bet ace king here. I'm pretty sure I will 3 bet ace king there. It's uh, way too good. Um, here I'm gonna float him once uh, with Jack Queen, two over cards, a back door, uh, straight and a back door um, flash draw. And once he double barrels, let's take a look. Oh, only 15 hands. I am just going to give up. If it was the Queen of uh, King of Clubs, I'd probably still make a call. Uh, here on table number three, obviously three running uh, the pocket kings. I got stacked on table number two while the video was off. I had aces, the other guy had kings, and uh, he stacked me just all in here. Three betting there, uh, easy game. I'm falling there. There, there is some lag on my computer. I'm gonna pause the video for a second and be right back. Okay, I'm back. I apologize for the slight lag of my computer. Um, I still haven't looked where how the hand actually went, played out with the kings. What did the guy have? Uh, Ace King, so it's uh, kind of a cooler, but um, yeah, it's kind of a cooler because I'm do play 38 31 of the 16 hands. So if I had Ace King button versus blind, and my opponent is playing 38 31, I'm also stacking off. So I can't blame the guy in green here on table number three. Yet I tagged him green because he's playing 41 18, he doesn't reload his stack now. It's really short, um, which is kind of annoying because it's really difficult to play against a short guy, except with hands like uh, exactly ace queen. Um, Jack 10, I will call. Uh, I have position, it's great hands. I don't think uh, three betting is. I don't three bet a lot, by the way. Uh, you've saw it. I three bet like three percent. So basically, I three bet aces kings. Uh, here I will three bet the ace queen just because I want this guy out and uh, just get it heads up versus uh, the shorty. 
and with, with, with this uh, we will get a head zip oh he even folds that's horrible by him uh, but hey uh, it's free money for me okay we've got another table I already switched out one of the tables while you were gone uh, well while the video was off because um, hmm, this is interesting it doesn't see that here this either means that he has an ace or uh, nothing um, so I'm just gonna check this back and hope for a, f uh, a safe turn card which I will bet if he checks again that's not a safe turn card with the uh, jack uh, with uh, uh, another heart and I'm just gonna check it uh, pocket tens versus this guy 3 bet, fold to 3 bet, e3 uh, I'm just gonna raise it up, it's uh, too good of a hand to be just uh, calling there for a min raise from the button and I'm checking there hopefully to um, win at showdown but uh, he has pocket kings I don't really like the way he played it by the way uh, he's gave me every opportunity to suck out on that board um, you have to keep in mind that when uh, you have pocket kings here you can see that here I know there's an ace on the board but there's a lot more hands than ace x which are going to call you uh, obviously when you do get raised uh, it's time to get out of the hand but people never bluff uh, like uh, suited boards so you can safely fold there your kings without any hesitation queen 10 I will defend my big blind um, but uh, I'm looking at the tables and these are not what I want um, I am on a lot of waiting lists but uh, it's Saturday so seems uh, a lot of people are on the lists uh, here this is like a, a really tiny bet uh, I'm still not gonna raise him I'm gonna call him if he checks the turn I'll bet it um, I don't think he's got a lot when he makes like such a small C bet he does double barrel and he is a needy guy um, and he makes it 55 into 74 um, He's not a needy guy, he's actually, uh, I've recognized him, uh, he's a regular at these stakes, 10 and 0. Um, so I'm just gonna fold. Not getting into wars with the regulars, this is really important. I'm looking at yeah, this guy, I'm gonna take him green, I can see it already. Like rolling up six dollars forty five cents. I don't know who does that. And sitting on his phone, he does sit out. He wait for the blind. So that's something um, to keep in mind. Table number two here. I think this guy is pretty bad. But uh, playing fifty eight twenty six. We get three bets by an unknown. As I said, we have king queen suited. Oh, I'm not gonna fall. Yes, I'm gonna fold. Who cares? I really don't care, I'm just waiting to double up versus one of these uh, one of the green tagged people um, okay this guy, Dijar Ser Serbia, looks interesting I'm gonna tag in green, he's not fully stacked um, he's playing 75, 25, only 4 hands but he played 3 out of 4 hands so seems kinda here, King Jack, easiest decision ever Boom. So, I mean, anybody can play like this and play uh, a lot of tables. Um, this is interesting here. This guy is definitely positionally aware um, with the ace uh, king here. So, I'm merely gonna call his. If I raise, I'm just falling out all his hands that I beat. Um, unfortunately, this is 10 and 0, and everybody will come along now. And that's not a good thing for ace king. and it's 5 to the flop but there's nothing really you can do here with ace king by the way ace king uh, don't over rate it at the micro stakes if you get it in pre-flop in the best case you're flipping most of the time 
unless you got a really uh, aggressive image. Uh, the rest is just folding. Jack A suited, like let's say for instance, I was under the gun here with Jack A suited, and this guy was in the big blind. I would raise it if he had a little bit more of a stack. Uh, now it's just a fold. Jack A suited there from the hijack. If I flop an ace or a king uh, on table number four, I will be very cautious versus these two guys, but uh, against the guy with the green tag, um, fist pump, trying to get it in. Uh, and we do flop our uh, king. Uh, I think Payanda is not going to bluff into uh, three people here uh, if he has air. As you can see, he checked, he never has aces. So I have the best hand, unless like FD25 has pocket ace or pocket fives. Uh, he doesn't have ace king because he would three bet it. But I want this guy who probably was more than likely to have an ace. The guy by. Uh, I don't like the call from FD. This is like. I mean, he doesn't have to race with a set because the board is so unbelievable uh, dry. Well, we got another call from the fish, but I don't mind that. That's a good thing. I'm gonna bet half pot. Uh, if this guy raises, I'm out of the hand. And the, with the other guy, I'm obviously getting it in. A great hand on table number one. Uh, because we are versus the, I guess, the guy that I tagged a little bit. And I'm shipping on table number one. I mean, I'm still gonna get called by King Queen. Some King Six, some, yeah, I don't know. Um, it is possible that he now turned two pair once, but uh, there's a lot more other hands. And I think if he has had to, uh, turned two pair, he would have bet. So. Uh, getting it in there with his king and indeed he has king 4 so my read was uh, correct also keep in mind as I mentioned I'm not gonna get into war with this regular here if he would have raised me on the turn I mean I'm solely putting him on and I will be correctly to do so okay, let me get the hand back up I mean I see he knows that I bet here into four people so he knows that I have something when I then bet the turn again on a, such a dry flop he must at least put me on a very good king so if he raises me there I mean you can easily you can safely fold because my hand is kind of my hand is face up um, unless I have pocket ace pocket fives I will split pocket ace pocket fives again but it's clear that I have a hand and um, He's not gonna try to bluff me from my hand, um, that's for sure. But against the fish, obviously, he doesn't care what I have. And, uh, uh, top pair against the guy, 25 25. This is just, I'm gonna, still gonna get called by 10x. Uh, it's still gonna call me, so I will uh, make 10x pay. Jack 9 is gonna call me, even if even he's, he's Jack, probably calls at least one street um, I'm looking at the table I stacked the donkey on table number four and I'm up now versus a couple of regulars so I feel and he's sitting out if he joins back in I'm not gonna table number four if he joins back in I'll be in the hand I'll, I'll be back in too but it seems to look let me open it already now I will open another table to, which I'll probably replace, yeah. He's not gonna jump back in the fish with his phone. He just turned off his phone in anger. So, uh, that's his top pair got beaten. My videos must be so boring because, I mean, this there can't be anything more simpler than this. Just falling and waiting until you hit. And the trick is, waiting until you're hit and then betting doesn't work with regulars because they will know oh this guy has got something but fish doesn't care that's why we play with fish 
Uh, Queen, he pots it. I'm not too jumpy to get it in here. I'll just make a call. That's a blank turn card. Uh, King, Queen. Oh, I got three bet by a regular. He's probably. No, he's bluffing me. Yeah, he three bets. Three out of. No, two out of 13. Oh, who cares? I'm off the table anyway. Uh, I'm gonna try to get some value here. I will bet fold on table number three. Bet fold because um, there's so many draws out there which he will call with. Um, but now, uh, since he raised that turn here, uh, I'm just gonna fold my queen axe here. Uh, I do get a good price. Um, let me take a quick look now. Just fold it. And set mining on table number one. I'll put this table in there. See if there is any fishies on there. Table number two is also a table I should leave. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm gonna three bet here. Actually, never pl never played 16L that much. I should play it more because I have the feeling that people aren't too good. Uh, I'm really worried about the guy 1411 uh, cold calling. This guy never has aces or kings. I am eight, so I'm happy about that. Uh, I have to make a C bet here. Uh, if any of these two guys wants to get it in here, uh, I'll have to. Ugh, I'll have to think. I think I'll fold if any of these two guys gets it in. And you say what you fold? Yeah, um, I don't think they'll ever like turn their hand into effectively a bluff with pocket nice, pocket tens. They rather float this flop, uh, this C bet. I rarely see people floating here with pocket, uh, uh, raising there, uh, especially regulars. Fish will raise there with pocket nines, thinking, "Oh my God, I have an overpair." Not thinking about my range there. Um, but, oh, I missed my set. I'll just fold. But you have to think about it. So it might kind of seem nitty there to. Fold versus a raise there with pocket queens. But think about it. This guy, I am eight, doesn't have aces or kings. He knows that I know that he doesn't have aces or kings. Uh, Ace queen suited, and we get three bets, and we are deep. No, well, we're not that deep. Uh, he does 3 bad a lot. Uh, wow, what are you doing, Colossus? No, don't fall. Oh, fold. Who cares? Go to the next hand. I mean, I'm there for this green guy who's gonna limp in now, probably. It is profitable to play against me. Uh, I mean, if I even fold ace queen suited in position versus a three bet versus somebody who three bets like mm, already three out of sixteen times, it is profitable for him to play against me. But I don't. But I don't really care. He's not gonna make a lot of money from me. <laughs> he's gonna make more. He's gonna pay him more in rake than he ever makes uh, money from me. I have to. I have to admit, I will not always fold a queen suited there. Uh, don't get me wrong. Here nine ten suited. Normally I fold, but I will min raise now just to get it heads up. Try to get it heads up with uh, Mr. Green Tech. Uh, here on table number two. I have to. Oh no no no! Somebody joined with a four dollar stack, showing his miraculous bronze star. Oh, unfortunately, the donkey does something on table number three, which I can't. Uh, yeah, obviously, I can't call that, so I just have to fold. Oh, yeah, he's getting a green tag on table number two. He's got a phone. He's got like his bronze star showing. He just donked posted. I'm gonna raise it up just because of the debt money in there. And I probably would have raised it up anyway, uh, even without the debt money. A really dry flop. 
When I get dunked into by no no, he can have it. I have king high. I don't care. Just fold. Done with the hand. Go to the next one. There's 15 other tables making beeping sounds waiting for you. So make the decisions easy. And I don't mean that after you watch this video that you should start up the lobby of Poker Stars and start playing 15 tables. By far not. Just make sure uh, you play 4 tables and make sure that you have the correct attitude and understand what I uh, what you should do in every situation. And after like a week or even 2 weeks you can add one more table, 2 more tables, then 2 more tables 2 weeks after that. And before you know it you'll get pretty used to... Um, Playing more tables. Nine queen offsuit. I'm not even gonna raise it first. It's like three people are just waiting for me there. For me there on table number three to three bet me. Uh, I'm just focusing on the guy with the green tag. Jack nine offsuit. I will defend my big blind though. Um, very wide just because it's so profitable to have position. Set mining on table number one. Miss uh, call on table number four. I mean, there's nothing else I can do. Uh, just call, call, call. I'm not even gonna raise this turn if he bets again. I mean, if I raise this turn, I'm mean, basically saying, "Oh my God, I have jacks," and who knows what he tries to bluff with uh, this guy. Kind of funny that he keeps on betting. Uh, the thing is, if I raise, I'm never gonna get called by anything worse from a guy playing 2015. Um, it's, it's kind of weird even that he bets like 3 straight, so I would not be even be surprised if I get beaten here. Seems kind of needy not to raise here, but against the 2015, and he probably has hands on me. Uh, he's gonna fold everything that I beat if I raise him, so I'm just gonna call. And look, we saved ourselves a lot of money um, by just calling. Uh, nine king, I don't have any hands on this guy, so I'm just gonna let it go there. I think table number one is going to look interesting. I'm gonna tag some people. This guy with the phone, 71. This guy has way too big of a gap between his VPIP and preflop race. This guy is also playing on his iPad. Can we get a green tag? Oh. Table number four is uh, not a good table again. I think the fish left, so I'm gonna switch it out. So I think I folded for now uh, against every 3 bet. I never 3 bet myself unless I had aces or kings. Ace 9 suited, okay. This is an example of a hand that I will raise. Uh, just because there's, a, I think, a fish in the big blind. There's a fish on the button, which I don't care so much because he is only has 50 big blinds. Queen 7 suited, I will fold just because all the guys behind me are regulars. There was a fish in the big blind here on table number four or in the small blind. I would raise queen seven suited because I can definitely play it profitable versus a fish, but against the regulars, pff, no, thank you. And regulars, I mean, I don't mean that they're by any means that they're really good players who are going to outplay me, but I mean, I don't have time to play queen seven suited versus a regular. I'm, I'm playing 10 other tables uh, where I have to put my attention to. 3 4 suited. Uh, if he was deeper, I would call here even. Uh, okay, with this guy also coming along, me getting uh, more than 1 to 5, I make the call here. Hope to hit trips, a uh, flush, uh, 2 pairs, something like this. Straight. Nope, we don't get it. So we're done. I only had to pay like one big blind. Uh, against people who are definitely paying me off if I hit trips or two pair. So, God damn it, also the donkey left on table number two because he made a little bit of money. Thinking, yeah, he made some money and damn, bang, he left. Did I miss a hand? 
Wow, interesting hand on this one. I'm not gonna switch out tables anymore. Um, I think the video has been running for quite a while. I'm just gonna check out this hand because this is a funny hand. Okay, first of all, okay, I'm gonna explain this later. I would not steal from a guy who is I don't I don't remember his hand, uh, Dr. Firefly. Uh, Queen 10 suited, this is borderline. This is borderline profitable. Um, Queen 10 suited versus typical normal guys. Although this guy is not fully stacked here, 22, 17, but he is like yeah, somebody who just doesn't like to reload. Uh, 5, 6, 8, I mean, I have to see that. I have Queen I. Uh, this is the only bluff I do. Uh, if I get raised, I mean, fine. <sighs> you see, he falls. I see a lot of people checking. Oh my god, I've heard in a video that you shouldn't be sieving this type of board because it's so coordinated and you will get played back at. Yeah, you. <sighs> yes and no. If they are out of position, they will play back at you way less. On the second hand, people play back at you lesser than you think. Uh, when people raise you there <laughs> on a seabed, it's probably because they have something like pocket fives, pocket sixes, pocket eights, something like ace seven with the ace of spades, something really good. Uh, that's why you don't see that because like a lot of Uh, a lot of hand, a lot of hands of villain will hit this board, but with queen high, I am forced to see bet there, and I'm quite happy to get him fold like ace jack uh, because he will fold ace jack out of position there because he knows even if he turns an ace or a jack, what is is he going to do out of position versus me? Pfft. Raise my turn bet. Okay. So we covered like I'm c betting practically almost always. Well, actually, we can check this in my stats. I, uh, this is a great situation here on table number. I just bought it 16. Then I don't have to make it this big, I think. Well, who cares? Um, just bought it. He only raises 9%, so he's al he, al he already has an... Um, very tight raising range, so I expect him to have something decent here, but not as decent as pocket queens. And he shows up with pocket sevens and we win. It's kind of funny that stars doesn't show the hands anymore in an all in. I don't know if something changed. I recently I changed to poker stars version 7. Don't really, I'm too keen of it. Uh, I mean, when you. Well, I don't know if it's an improvement, I guess. Uh, but there were some changes that I didn't like. Like when I'm all in, I just want to see the other guy's cards. I don't have to I want to wait until like all the cards came and I just want to see it. Uh, Nine king here. I'm just gonna well, not gonna defend my. Pff, it's closed though. Why did I take him green? Uh, because the because of the big gap between his uh, oh yeah I forgot to see that here sorry uh, I think I'm gonna barrel here why because I still believe uh, that this guy might have floated me and I believe that if I do hit now I have so much equity if I hit I want to get paid off on the river ah unfortunately we don't he insta called he didn't think about it. Um, so I'm putting him on something like no sets but something like 9x which is I guess against an unknown I don't wanna bet here uh, also how many kings do I have in my range here that well he's not thinking about never mind forget that I said this just give up I'm done um, we actually had pocket force I'm, uh, that's one of the hands that I tried to fold out with the turn bet but um, as you can see, I already tagged him green and I didn't do it in this session. So he's probably his stats will pop up. No, his stats don't pop up. Oh, his stats are actually decent, 2014, but that was uh, really loose. 
Why am I raising king three suit? That was a uh, a loose turn call there. Why am I raising king three? Because there's a guy in the big blind. I believe I have a huge edge on. Um, gonna see, but here even again, it's a very coordinated board. But I, I mean, what else are you going to do? I mean, as you see, they're still in the fault. They don't play back at you. They, these guys are not creative unless they have something. They first need to have something before they can be creative. That's all you need to know. Fold, fold. Okay, I think this video has been running uh, for quite a while. Um, I hope you enjoy. There's so uh, there's so much to talk about, and I am oh. I apologize. I wanted to show you um, the eight different main topics I will discuss in the next coming videos again I wanted to show you again because poker is fun when you see how everything is tangled together like you want to have the right uh, position also you want to have the right hand with the right stack size you want to play a, a, a lot of tables you want to avoid the regulars you I mean once you get this click in your it's like an it, it, it doesn't come like overnight but there is this there is this point at which you say okay I got it um, and usually that point is when you fire up a session and you're sitting there and you're like having uh, like in an hour you have won like 10 buy-ins and you say like fuck I didn't even do something I just sat there and told did what the Colossus told me to do and money will come um, and that's at the point where you have to remind yourself that the money that you just want isn't you, you're not gonna have always like winning days there will be losing days so don't think um, that it comes by himself but you can say that look uh, it works uh, I just have to put in hands now and build my bankroll so that I can move up at 50 and now 100 and now where things get more complicated but that's uh, for an entirely other series so i hope you enjoyed it this was colossus and i'll see you guys in the fall